Opinionated and now caffeinated, Wake Up War Chant is fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. Founded in 2014 by the Lemmix family, Ed, Courtney, and their son, Brett, DeLuna Coffee is Florida State through and through. The pursuit of the perfect blend of coffee beans is a 365-day effort for the family, but they'll always find time to tailgate for their knolls in the autumn. Stand at attention for their red, white, and brew. In honor of armed forces, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, DeLuna has created this fair trade organic blend. Enjoy this premium French roast coffee and salute to the good old USA. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closers only. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. DeLunaCoffee.com. Come explore our world of coffee. You know what's going down over at the website, everybody. The War Champ Bundle. Scroll down about halfway there under the beautiful mug of, of the guys behind DeLuna Coffee. That'd be Ed and Brett, Matriarchs Courtney. We love her as well. The bundle is one Wake Up War Champ tumbler. A White Sands bag of coffee, folks. You either get the whole bean, you can get it coarsely ground, you can get it for your drip coffee maker, and... A tin of chocolate-covered sea salt caramels. They just keep throwing all these curveballs at us. It's amazing. DeLunaCoffee.com. If you just want to order coffee, use the promo code WARCHANT15. That lets them know, hey, you listen to the show and you appreciate them. And it'll give you a little bit of a discount. WARCHANT.com. Ultimate Semmel Sports Source. Promo code that. WARCHANT30. Subscribe. Like. Uh, Five-star ratings. Reviews. All that sort of stuff. And let's give it up for our guy, Corey Clark. Long day for our guy, a reboot seminal headlines live on YouTube, gets in the car, drives back up, Mr. Dad. Now he does this podcast. Corey Clark, how do you do it? How do you do? I'm I'm doing well, buddy. And just, you know, uh just how I was raised, I guess. How how I'm built. Uh long day, but it's it's good to be it's good to be talking to you, Aslan. You're the either the bluest white collar guy I know or the whitest blue collar guy I know, Corey. You're one <laughs> or the other. I have a buddy that always tells me that I'm the dumbest smart guy he's ever met. Ah, I think I'd rather be the dumbest smart guy than the smartest dumb guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Well, because I don't have a ton of common sense. Hmm. Like I I can score high on some tests, but when it comes to common sense, maybe not the, maybe not the best. Uh, So he would always tell me I'm the dumbest smart guy he knows. Well, let's prove that he's wrong. Let's get to these questions. Renegade Express, we're going to jump right into it. Japanol, I left the thread open. You didn't post. I had to lock it down because it opened up the floodgates. It is football season almost, so uh, we got bombarded with questions. It would take us probably forever if we left it open. But uh, tag me in a thread, and we'll read your question on the show. We'll do it, I promise. Warpath Noel starts us off, Corey. He simply says, wake up. Just want to say love you guys. You guys are the best. We really appreciate all you guys do to keep us entertained and informed. Thank you. Appreciate that. Is that really it? That's no. all he said? He's got some oh. questions, but that's where they okay. started but off. That, that's know. very nice, though. It's a, it's a wonderful sentiment to start. Who on this football team do you think will get the most NIL money? LOL. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of great uh, options out there, right? As far as, like, uh, big names yeah. right now. Like, maybe Toa Feely becomes a big name. Uh, but right now, I guess Milton is the biggest name, but we don't even know if he's going to start, do we? Right. I mean, the, the easy answer is quarterback. Right. But we don't know which one, um, which is crazy. The arguments that break out on YouTube videos of practice footage on the boards, I mean, it's – why can't we just – I don't know. It's not. It's not a Florida State thing. It'd be any fan base. But I just. I love how when there's a a true quarterback competition, we break off into factions and and just have civil wars. It's it's crazy. It's beautiful. It's passion though. That's what's what happens. I'll go ahead and say Mackenzie Milton. I'm not basing that on any of the performance that we've seen thus far, but just simply the fact that with I don't know what 22 more practices, uh, you might be able to find a way to squeeze in there. And if you start the first game and you upset Notre Dame like we all think. Sky's the limit. Second question. What true freshman are you most looking forward to seeing play this year? Hmm. Hmm. Things that make What about you, you? What are you What are you thinking about? Kevin Knowles, does he count? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he is a true freshman. He just he was here in the spring. Yeah. I talk about him all the time, but that's that's my number one right now. I'm not. I can't even think of a close second, honestly. Uh, maybe one of the wide receivers. McLean. Yeah, I was going to say Malik McLean. But uh, Kevin Knowles is the guy that's impressed me the most out of these true freshmen through, you know, a spring and three fall practices. Yeah, I mean, there's there's good options there. You know, I, I want to see what Byron Turner can do as a pass rusher, possibly early on in his career. We've been hearing, we heard good things about Shaheen Brown playing quite physical. Uh, Bryson Essies is a guy that looks quite uh, physically ready, possibly to contribute, but I don't know if, you know, the, the mental game is going to be there for a true freshman. That's a really tough sort of jump to make. You, you'd assume if he gets thrust into the starting lineup, probably not uh, the best sort of scenario. But I'll say my first. I'll say Malik McLean. Somebody else has got to get involved in this rotation. They're not just going to roll out Keyshawn, Parchman, and Pokey and, and just let it ride. Hey, man, uh, you got uh, you got uh, Darian Williamson. Yeah. Don't forget. Not true Don't freshman, forget about though. D. Will, my man. Not a true freshman, though. Not no, true. I know, but I think yeah. he could be a part of the rotation. Yeah. Oh, by the way, everybody, Florida State will be practicing Wednesday. We're going to have a full show for you folks on Thursday with some of the observations and such. I'll do my best to actually observe practice and not just stare at my computer screen the whole time. Mm. Uh, Thursday and Friday, they will be in Jacksonville practicing. Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, Corey, will they be scrimmaging in Jacksonville or are they going to be scrimmaging in Tallahassee? They will be scrimmaging in Tallahassee. Okay. All right, good. So they'll be back in Doak. Uh, So that's what's going down. We will be there. Myself, Irish O'Fell, and Austin Cox – uh, who beat Corey in an arm wrestling contest for the honors of being able to join us right. in Jacksonville. So we'll be out there, possibly come by and say hi. I think it's I – I shouldn't say that. I don't know if it's open to the public or not, but I would um, – I don't know. I'll stop talking. By the way, folks, if you're going to be in town this weekend for the Bobby Bowden Services and Memorial, uh, just a heads up, if you're going to be in town Friday, uh, 2 to 7 p.m. Again, Coach will be in repose at the Coyle Moore Center, the Sod Cemetery. They're going to do a little special uh, presentation ceremony, I guess. They're going to have a rose place next to each of the 63 Sod Game victory grave markers in the Sod Cemetery. The iconic hat and a framed photo of Coach will be on a black veil in the middle of the cemetery. So uh, cool. while, you're, while you're in town uh, at Moore taking photos by the statue, go, uh, you know, 75 yards, what is that, northeast uh, of the statue to the Sod Cemetery and uh, – they're going to have another thing there uh, for you to help uh, pay some pay some honor to Coach Bowden. I wonder if all, are 63, he's got 63 sod game victories, or do we have 63 sod game victories as a program? That's a well, lot I of, can't, that's a lot I, of dubs. Not, not everyone in there is his, yeah. so that's what I was that's what I was uh, wondering about. Um, yeah. I would yeah, You would think you'd just put the rows by his, the ones that are his. And now, look, man, it's Bobby Bowden, so most of them are his. Right, right. Uh, it wouldn't be embarrassing. It wouldn't be just like three rows. It, it's not like Daryl Mudra. Like, where's Mudra's big road win? I mean, the guy had most of the big road wins in Florida State history are Bobby Bowden's, but yeah, no, not all of those are his. No. Shout when out did to that Florida start? State, That's something I should know. When did the Sod Cemetery start, Aslan? Don't ask me questions. I don't know. I'm looking it up. To. You you start talking. Well, I'm going to say, shout something. out to Florida State for having 63 games where either they were a road underdog or they went and beat their rival on the road. Uh, for a program that's fairly young, youthful when it comes to of the relative age of this sport, uh, and Coach Bowden again, obviously the uh, the architect behind so many of those games. I want to oh, so the first one was in 1962, and it was uh, at uh, Georgia at Sanford Stadium. It must have been it had to be retroactive, right? I mean, the Sot Cemetery wasn't around back then. I wonder if we went back and retroactively started awarding these things. Uh, I no, I think it. Uh, I'm look, I'm reading it right now. You keep talking. Okay. All right. Great. Um, should I hop to the next question, Corey? Or should I tap dance sure. for a few seconds? No, keep going. Okay, let's talk to Mark. It's our guy down in Naples. No, man, that heart, that started in '62. So, uh, the Dean Coyle Moore, a longtime professor and member of FSU's athletic board, challenged the team at Thursday practice on in October 18th, 1962. Uh, bring back some sod from between the hedges at Georgia. They went up there and won 18 to nothing. Team captain Gene McDowell, who's the first All-American of Florida State history, by the way, pulled a small piece of graph from the field, it presented it to Moore and at the next football practice, and Moore and Coach Bill Peterson had the side buried at the practice field as a symbol of the victory. So that's when it started. Now, when it actually became a thing where they made it like its own little cemetery, right. it looks like that was 1988. Okay. All right. So half right, uh, but not really all that right. You, know, you hear these stories about people from Texas when their like grandchild is born elsewhere. Like they'll bring 
dirt from the state of Texas or like sod from the state of Texas and put it underneath like the baby's bed, like at the nursery or whatever in a hospital, just so they can say that the kid was, you know, born on Texas soil. Like if you could go and pick any, you know, if 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 thirty year old Corey Clark, how old you were when you had uh, Brady, what piece of turf would you would you have, you know, exhumed from the sod cemetery and placed under the wonderful man that is now Brady Clark, young man, I should say, right? Is he starting middle school? Where are we at right now? Man, he just started eighth grade. Eighth grade, let's go! Eighth grade, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. He's like a little adult. Sometimes, sometimes he still makes me want to throw him out of the car. I heard him speaking uh, the other night. Man, his voice is getting a little timber to it. <laughs> That's right, man. Just like his old man. Yeah. Just like his old man, just throaty in uh, baritone. Mm. Um, I would, man, it's got to be the punt ruski, right? Okay, all right. That would be the. Well, I say that, so probably the punt ruski, either that one or the victory at the uh, at, at Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm. Um, those were those are the two best memories I have of a road, and I, there were a lot of cool ones, but those are the two like all all time memories I have of uh, road games. You were at the punt ruski. Yeah, of course yeah. you're at the punt ruski. Yeah, he was running right at me. It becomes running, a point. Was running right at it me. becomes a point. Like where were you not? You know. So really. I would say if you're thinking about the biggest moment, and again, this is all my dad. Obviously, maybe the last ten or fifteen years it was my job, but before that, every cool. I, I, I just owe it to my dad. My dad had season tickets, and he was a booster. So and he's, he had a kid that loved sports and loved Florida State, so he would take him to these games. But the one big moment in Florida State history that I wasn't at was uh, War to Done uh, mm. at, in the Swamp in 93. Because you, you you took the Notre Dame trip away from your sister, so you stepped away and let her go. Yeah, yeah. we way. got to choose. So I went to Notre Dame, and then she got to go to the Florida game. So, that yeah, good job. Look at you remembering that. Wow. I would say that's the only one that I would be like, man, that that's the one that I, I, I was – I wasn't at that was like an all-time Florida State memory. All the other ones, man, I'm very, very lucky to have seen them. Back on the ponies, it's Mark and Naples, M. Adam, CZ. Wake up! Emotional week. You can't say enough great things about Coach Bobby Bowden. I got to meet him on a couple spring booster tours, and he had a way of making you feel special. My boys still have their football signed by Coach Bowden in their rooms, and they always will. Awesome, man. I've uh, never. Got, I, I heard he was just an absolute just – one man showing those booster tours like you especially the golf golf outings like it was just always always a pleasure to be around coach yeah and it's funny i i have a pretty unique perspective there because as, as i wrote about my column i've been going to those things since i was eight um because they'd come to atlanta and atlanta's a pretty big booster at least it well it is now back when it started when i went to that first one in 83 or 8, 84 i guess um you know, I would guess there were 50 people there, 100 people there. It wasn't much. It wasn't a huge, it wasn't a huge uh, event. And then you see it grow by the time it was 1991 and my dad stood up and asked how the rap video is coming. Um, you know, I, it, it might have been 1,000 people there. Hmm. And it, it just, it was like I was there on the ground floor when it was almost like it just wasn't a big deal. Like, it just wasn't. I remember talking to Ronald Lewis at some event, the old Florida State receiver, just as a kid. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing how from, like, early 80s to the middle of the dynasty, it just grew and grew. And so much of that was Bowden. Like, you knew you were going to get a show, right? Like, you knew he was going to talk for 30 minutes, he was going to take questions, and he was going to say two or three things that were incredibly funny, and he was going to be gracious and sit there and take photos with you and, and shoot, the, shoot the bull with you. Um, so that, that's what's, uh, that was what was so cool about those, about those times. Backtracking real quick, sorry. Warpath don't ask who's going to make the most NIL money. Obviously, duh. Devontae Love Taylor, who's now part True. of Warchant in, his some, in a somewhat roundabout way as we have uh, – Ink the deal with your boy, everybody. So uh, there's an NIL deal between Warchant and Devontae Love Taylor. I think it'll be a weekly yes. presentation where we'll be on YouTube live taking your folks' questions for Devontae. So be on the lookout. The very for first the one is uh, it's called Inside the Trenches, and the mm -hmm. very first one trench talk, trench talk, trench talk. I Sorry, trench talk. I did what Tom Lang did. Tom Lang, I blame you. Um, trench talk with Devontae Love Taylor. The first one is Sunday. Um, oh. But then I, I don't I don't think that will be. But what's cool about it is it's not you and I asking them questions or right, you and right. Ira. No. It's you know it's basically you guys leaving questions and him answering them. Yeah. Um, and what will be really neat? It's cool enough in the middle of August. But what will be really neat is every week after a game, 
to get him for 30 minutes and to actually, you know, we can ask him like what he eats for dinner, but you can also get in the weeds and I'm, I assume bring up a real, like, what were you trying to do right here? And what was, what did they say on the site? Like you guys can ask him these kind of questions. Um, and he's a really, he's, he's the most intelligent person working for war chain. I can tell you that he's a really bright dude. Yeah. And, um, it's just going to be a, I think it'd be really neat and a cool insight into the life of a, a student athlete in 2021. I keep bearing all the leads. I'm pretty sure it's Gene's birthday today, too. Jeez. Happy birthday, Gene. All right. Sorry about that. Back What's to he, Marcus. 40? The big 4-0? I mean, our guys, Benjamin Button, are just frozen. Like Bob yeah. Costas hasn't aged. It's frozen It's crazy. Time. He looks younger with that beard, too. All right, Mark's question. I have to say, or for another comment, I have to say the content on WarChan is at a whole new level. It's always been great, but you guys are really bringing it. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mark. Having seen a few days of fall camp, what are you most impressed with? What are you most frustrated with? Go Knowles. Mm. Corey. Defensive backs, I guess, is what you're going to say for being impressed. I'm sorry, I don't have really that educated of an answer on this one because, again, I really haven't been able to, to observe as much as I would yeah, like. Yeah, so th it, that, that's my answer for both, and I'm not trying to cop out here. But Whoa. like, the, How you the, do, how's that No, work? no, no, That this matchup, DBs versus wide receivers. Uh, okay. The DBs I've been very impressed with. Uh, wide receivers, man, I, it's just those I, – I just – I'm caught up on the sideline throws – the fades, the jump balls down the sideline, the back shoulder stuff, they don't ever do well there. The receivers don't. Like, they just don't make it. They're just not great at that yet. They're not even good at it yet. There, I would guess, hitting, because they do that a lot. In the one-on-ones, they'll try it, like, I don't know, six times. And I would say, so far, they've hit on 4% of them. Um, they, and they just, you, you want guys that can maybe snatch the ball a little better get their feet down, are more aggressive going towards the ball. But that's – I mean, I, I think that can be expected with a young wide receiver core and the, first, the start of practice. But I've been really, I guess, disappointed is the right word with the way the receivers have looked, specifically in the one-on-ones. They just – they're not winning a lot of battles, except for Helton and Pokey. But Helton and Pokey, Keyshawn and Pokey, aren't guys you would normally think, okay, we're going to throw a jump ball to those guys. Or a back shoulder. Back shoulders, sideline guys are you know, they're typically bigger dudes. And so box far, somebody out. Yeah. So far, Florida State's bigger guys haven't been great on that. Um, in, in, you know, in that way yet. Well, I've I've had some time to think about it. Thank you, Corey. Not that you were trying to stall for me, but good answers. Appreciate it. Good insight. Mm, got uh, it. I would say probably just the body composition of a lot of these guys. I think the offensive line now, granted. You know, they're not providing a lot of time for these quarterbacks in these 11-on-11s from what Corey's seen. And even the limited amount of time I've seen some stuff, they're uh, not exactly winning a lot at the point of attack. But I think – I really do think we, when we hear about defenses being ahead of offense at this point, especially when it comes to like a pass rush, you know, all you got to do is just get up and go as a defensive lineman. It, it takes some time getting used to being an offensive lineman, dropping back in your sets, absorbing the blows, uh, and getting used to it and kind of getting your sea legs there. So – I think they'll be okay, but I just think you know they're you know Bavion's Bavion looks pretty good, man. I think physically they're in pretty good shape. I know people think that Dante looks like he's you know a donut or two away from turning into like a WWE freak show. I don't necessarily see that. I don't necessarily count on Dante right now at this point. But I think they have enough options there that are physically prepared. Um, you know, I think Malik McLean is another guy that looks pretty like he's really done well in the weight room. So I think they did good. Uh, in the weight room this summer. That's uh, what I'm most impressed with. Most frustrated with, and this probably sounds crazy, just I want to see one of these quarterbacks just take it already. I know it's really early, guys. It's, it's three days, but it would be really great to have one of these guys have come out and just been pretty flawless through three practices. I know that's it's asking a lot. I don't yes. have a necessarily a favorite, everybody. Some people think that we're picking favorites here. I would just think simply based on the amount of data we've seen from Mackenzie Milton and Jordan Travis, Mackenzie Milton's ceiling is probably a little bit higher. Now, granted, that was maybe a lifetime ago before his injury, but I think he's made it past that physically. We'll see if mentally it clicks. Uh, but it'd be nice if we weren't talking about, you know, the quarterbacks not really, uh, you know, shining. It's more kind of uh, them running for their lives and the defense taking over. But we'll, we'll see. I, I think Jacksonville, the tide's going to change out there, Corey. The tide's going to change. Okay, let me clean up a little bit uh, real quick. I guess the Sod Cemetery theoretically, technically, was – I was wrong. It wasn't 88. That's when Douglas – I read the Wikipedia wrong. Mm. That's when Douglas Manheimer took over as the Sod Cemetery keeper. It's like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, um, God does. But it, I guess it really did start in 62. Like, it, it officially – there's this – they they I guess they – 
you know, obviously it, it wasn't where it is now, mm-hmm. but they, they started building the, uh, the, that's where the cemetery started when was 1962. And I just, I just counted it up and Bowden did have 63. My goodness. So, so there's, it looks like there's probably, I don't know, there's probably 50, maybe 20 before he started 15 or 20. Yeah. Probably 15. They they were on a six year drought before, uh, before Bowden started. They hadn't had a sod cemetery game since October 24th, 1970 Eesh. until Bowden got one in 76. And then they really started coming. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like, so what's funny too about that. So the, the, the parameters were an underdog on the road. Well, Florida state in the nineties was, was hardly an ever an underdog. So then they, you know, it was underdog on the road or rivals. Right. So they made Florida and Miami bowl count. Games too, they made bowl similar. games count. And then I think they even made it where, like, if you were less than a touchdown favorite on the road. Oh. So if Florida State was only a five-point favorite, it still counted as a sod game. Oh, wow. Because, like, the 97, like, the 97 game at UNC where it was, like, number two versus number four and Florida State won 20 to three, um, there's no way North Carolina was favored to win that game. There's just no chance. But it still counted as a sod game. And I think I remember, it was a long time ago now, stuff's not staying in my brain as long as well as it used to. I'm almost positive they changed the parameters where it went from being a road underdog to being just barely a favorite on the road. Okay. Anyway, so I wanted to clean that up. Kirk Knowles. Ian, okay. Sorry, what, one thing. Sorry, mm. sorry, Aslan. The last game you ever coached was a sod game. That's right. West Virginia. Not knows. just because it was a bowl game, too. I mean, that was the main reason. But they were an underdog in that game. And, uh. Yeah, they came out 33-21 victors. I would not even have guessed that there were 63 placards or tombstones in that cemetery. Man, they really know how to maximize their yeah, real estate. Yeah, it seems well like done. it's about 30 Yeah, well done. when you walk by. Yeah, that, that's a, that, that'll be a really cool scene. I'm glad they're doing that. That's cool that they're doing that. Kirk Knoll, a.k.a. Shane. Wake up! What an emotional week to get through. I needed football to get back to practice and find something to take my mind off losing what I consider two of the greatest people I have ever had the honor of spending time with. Sadly, I only met Coach Bowden once, but for those five minutes at his book signing in Texas, he made me feel like I was the most important person he had ever met. Uh, shout out to Shane. I mean, by the way, he, he did email because uh, he couldn't make these. like, hey, sorry, I can't make the live show, family, emergency. Um, it's fine. It's fine, Shane. You know, take care of what you got to take care of, man. Uh, we'll be here for you. We're uh, sorry for your loss, though, Shane. I, I saw that email, too. Sorry for your loss, buddy. Uh, Practice is here. The coverage is the best and always keeps me up to date. So I did this last year, and I wanted to bring it back again. Penalties. I'm a strong believer. You keep that number low, you'll increase your chances of winning games by a good margin. Mm. Last year, we averaged 8.8 per game, down yes. from 9.3 in 2019. Yep. Slowly but surely. Okay. Technique. Details. With that being the words I hear a ton of, is this the year we get better at keeping the number of penalties down and help keep us in games and give us a shot to win some games? As always, keep up the awesome work. Can't wait to see everyone in Tallahassee for the Notre Dame game. Called it months ago, still believe it. Florida State over Notre Dame to start the new Seminole season. I like it. Yeah, I mean, that's a good sign, right? Um, You know, like I talked about, it, it faded at the end of last year, but I thought it was a good sign that Florida State improved so much in special teams because that is such a, uh, a concentration of Norvell, and they were one of the worst special teams units in the country uh, in 2019. Last year, he turned them into, I, I think, a little bit above average um, in the S&P ratings. Same thing, I guess, you could look at with penalties. If the, you know, You're not going to go from 9.3 to 2 per game. That's not happening. But they did lower it a little bit. 8.8 is still nothing to do cartwheels for. It's, you're not going to have a parade for only getting nine penalties a game. But, you know, maybe this year you get down to six and a half or six. Yeah, man, it's all hidden yardage. And sometimes it's an 80-yard penalty because you have a ninety, you have an 80-yard touchdown that's taken away for a hold or for a, uh, you know, a, a wrong alignment, which is even more egregious than a hold. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, I think that's a good sign. I think, yeah, man, it, it, all that stuff matters. If you lower the penalty numbers, if you lower the turnover numbers, that, that all adds up to wins and losses, especially when the margin is so thin. Yeah. That was, and the margin is thin, in a, which should, should be, could be thin in a lot of these games. That's the irony of all this is that 19, you know, with Taggart's last season, like the Wake Forest game was a close one. I just looked it up real quick. Eight penalties for 69 yards. The Boise mm. State game, uh, the Virginia game, 
Although Virginia gifted Florida State several penalties late in that game to, to kind of put them well, in that's position. That's true. To, Good point. Um, but, yeah, and unfortunately, 2020, the losses were not all that close uh, other than the Georgia Tech game. But the Georgia Tech game, wasn't there a false start in that final drive of the fourth quarter or, or maybe a hold? Something happened. I blocked it out. I blocked it out, yeah, Aslan. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. But, yeah, if, if they can be competitive, uh, penalties, that's that definitely helps close the margin there. So um, let's hope that the uh, – the discipline, the attention to detail kind of gets driven home here in the, in the next 22 practices. I mean, shoot 21 after you guys uh, and gals listen to this, some of you at least, because they'll be practicing at 9 o'clock in you know, Tallahassee on Wednesday. Back to the questions, random underscore John. Good morning, Aslan and Corey. With Gene seemingly on a runaway train mission to hire all the talented people who cover FSU, who do you feel is the next move for Gene and Warchant? <laughs> How long until Warchant can ESPN the college football world and force conference realignment on war chance terms. That hey, not a bad question. Not a bad question. You're probably going to make a run at what? What do Canel? Yeah, yeah. Canel or what? what maybe Mark Packer. Max Would you Brayton. rather have Packer or Durham? Canel. We need you got to be a Noel man. I know. I was just saying if you if you can only oh. choose between Packer and Durham. Uh, Packer. No, no Durham, Durham. Durham. West Durham. could. I don't. Yeah. I've never West's met. A really nice person. West is a super nice dude. Uh, and uh, but I, I wanted to give them a quick shout out. Lord knows I've given the ACC network plenty of grief over the years, and it's all been earned. But if you saw their, <laughs> if you saw Packer and Durham's show lineup on Monday after Bowden passed, it was all Bobby Bowden. Um, I I couldn't list who was on it right now to save my life. But it was it was maybe like you know it was a Charlie Ward it was a Warwick Dunn it was it was a bunch of Florida old Florida State players Mark Richt uh, to talk about Bowden it was almost like a three hour show de- I think it was a three hour show dedicated just to Bobby Bowden now if you're in Tallahassee could you watch it yeah. no yeah. but hey if you had cable if you have cable in Tallahassee if you've got I don't know Hulu or Sling or whatever yeah, they're on sure sure um, so all right. With the knowledge that we as Noel fans, although back to your question about who's in the next move, I, I just imagine Gene as, uh, you know, Al Pacino and Scarface when he okay. breaks, you know, after the club, he goes to that guy, Frank's hideout, you know, like the, the boss or whatever, mm. and takes him out. And then the, that guy's bodyguard is all nervous and like word that he's going to get killed. And he's like, hey, man, you want a job? And he's like, yeah, sure. He's like, all right, come see me tomorrow. And then he walks out and he just chugs a bunch of whiskey because the guy's just like escaped death and now he's got a job. So that's why Gene's going to bust into one of these places, wipe them all out. He's going to save one person. I don't know who it's going to be, though. I don't know who it's going to be. All right. Stay tuned. I can't wait to see it. With the knowledge that we as Noel fans need to temper our expectations this year, what should we look for to be the thing that excites us the most this year? What is something that we may feel excited about now but may need to pump the brakes before we go all in, uh, a la the defensive line last year. I think those were two separate questions and thoughts. All right, so the first one, what yes. should we look for to be the thing that excites us the most this year? Offensive production? I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, more cons- consistent offensive production, I will say. They had some moments. They had those good opening drives of the first half and yeah. the second half the entire season. Uh, the first half against North Carolina. Hopefully we can see a little bit of that sustained success against teams that they should be able to do that against. I mean, they should be able to move the ball on a Louisville. They should be able to move the ball on a Syracuse. They should be able to move the ball on Wake Forest. Uh, let, let's see some of that uh, and, and, you know, improve quarterback play, I guess, is part of that. But I'll say that, just improve the offensive production, consistency there. Um, I guess I'll say pass rush. Okay. There's my there's my answer. I would also go and piggybacking off what you said though. Second half offense, uh, it was horrific last year. Mm. Um, even in the big game they won, they were shut out in the second half. Like they just they they could not. Uh, other than Duke at the end of the year, um, and Chuba Chuba had a nice second half uh, against NC State. But other than that, their offense in the second half was non-existent, and that's that was not a great sign. Um, for a coach that's usually been really good at that, at making adjustments in the middle of the game and putting up points in the second half. And they didn't do that at all last year, and that was not a great sign. I want to see that get a lot better. Let me sort of change my mind, and then let me spin into a question for you, Corey, and then we'll get to the second part of this. I don't want to take too much time on the, this one. but So they had 25 commitments from the 2020 class. So this was, this was Norvell's, you know, first class where he got to, you know, he kind of was thrust into – 
uh, having to piece all this stuff together, right, uh, taking over the job. 25 guys they signed. The, the likes of Sidney Williams, DJ Lundy, Robert Scott, Corey Wren, uh, Portier, Brian Robinson, Chuba, et cetera, et cetera. They're all still young. They're all still technically freshmen because nothing counted last year. Like, boy, I think you want to see at least, I don't know, five of those guys kind of give you a hope that maybe they can develop into being a, an all-conference performer. I don't know how much of the yeah. landscape of college football is going to change with the transfer portal and maybe your past mistakes, you won't have to pay for your, your poor recruiting sins in years past because you'll be able to fix it with instant recruiting uh, transfers. But, man, it'd be good to see somebody like a Darren Williamson, for instance. Like one of these, at least five of these 25, you know, give you something to where you're like, all right, this has shown their ability to evaluate talent really well and to find guys that are under-recruited but to find good value in them. I think if, if you can see these guys perform, that makes you feel excited about the future. Okay, yeah, I can get on more with that. I agree. All right. What is something that we may feel excited about now, though, that we need to pump the brakes before we go all in? defensive backs i'm guessing because that's yeah uh, well but I, I don't know that it's like oh man these guys are awesome this is the sky patrol this is like Dion and martin mayhew and those dudes and, and leroy butler i just think it's the strength of the team but there aren't a lot of strengths of this team right now right like i think it's the best position group but that doesn't mean i think it's one of the best in the country last year was a huge whiff because you know there were some magazines that had florida state as having one of the best defensive lines in the country um, we thought it was going to be the strength, and it was going to be one of the better units in the country, and it was hor- it was horrible. Um, it was one of the it was just awful. It was an it was awful terrible performance yeah. from start to finish um, by those guys. So I don't think we're thinking of the DBs in that same vein. You know, I don't think this is the be- one of the best groups in the country. Um, I think they could be one of the best groups in the Atlantic. You know, that's something. Let's aim a little lower so we're, we won't be uh, so uh, frustrated if they don't perform up to what we think they can do. All right. Uh, in closing, random underscore John says, by the way, drink the Luna coffee while eating Zaxby's chicken tenders. They're called mm. fingers, by the way. Uh, because it tastes good, it's the right thing to do, and it helps pay all the bills for War Chant and the sponsoring businesses. Um, yeah, help these people out, man. Ed, our guy Danny and Zaxby's, these are, these are huge Florida State fans. Like, they give to the program. I mean, they feed them coffee yeah. and chicken. Come on. Uh, no judgment if you dip your tenders into your coffee, random underscore John says. Oh, yeah, there is. Noel 756, wake up. Listening to you guys talk about Andrew Parchment playing in the Big 12 and Corey saying how good our defensive backs look on top of Keyshawn's comment about corners being physical with him and getting his speed back is helping him a lot. It got me thinking. Does Andrew Parchment have an advantage with his size, or does he take some time to adjust to the more physical defenses the ACC may have over the Big 12? Drink your DeLuna, go Knowles, and God bless Bobby Bowden. There you go. Oh, no, the ACC definitely has more physical and better defenses than the Big 12. The Big 12 is like 7-on-7 uh, football. So it, it will be an adjustment in that sense. Again, he's not going up against Dion and T-Buck. Uh, I, I, they are, they are playing well though. I think those corners could be pretty good. Um, and yeah, it's going to be an adjustment. I think the adjustment for parchment more is just like what he talked about, um, after Monday's practice was just the detail coaching that he's getting, that he's never really gotten before. And they are hammering at home with him. They want him to know that they're going to be on him and they are on him. And that's what, uh, that's where I think that the, the, you know, I don't know if it's the physicality so much that's that's that will be an adjustment as much as just the pace, urgency, and the way that Norvell coaches and what he wants from his receivers. I think that's maybe more the adjustment than the physicality. You know, I, I mentioned this to you, I think, on Monday. You know, Kenny's in his golf cart because he, he tore his patellar tendon, and he's outside with the quarterbacks in the brief sort of the beginning of practice. And he's got one eye on his quarterbacks. I thought he had two eyes on his quarterbacks, but he had one eye on what was going on inside the IPF, and it was something that Andrew Parchment did. But like he's yelling instructions to, to Jordan and McKenzie and coaching them up, and then you hear him kind of echo all, off, and he's like, hey, Andrew, great rep, man, great rep, great effort. And I'm like, man, like they're, they really seem to be, you know, I don't want to say the helicopter coaching him, but they, they really seem to be – Devote, div, diverting their resource, their attention to him as much as they possibly can. Why is that, Corey? If I was going to pay 
play pop psychologist. This Please. is a kid that's this is his fourth school, right? Yes, yes. Like Northern Illinois, a JUCO, Kansas, and now Florida State. And last year, he basically just I I don't know what happened. He played in those games, but 2019 he was one of the better receivers in the Big 12. 2020 he disappeared. So maybe it's somebody that personality wise or confidence wise. They, you know, he might be a little different cat than they're used to coaching. That, and they know that maybe when he's engaged, he can be a difference maker. But when he's not engaged, say 2020, or say when he was at Northern Illinois, that he he's not going to give you anything. So there, I I would I would assume that has something to do with it too. Like you're talking about a super senior that's at his fourth school in six years. This isn't Rashad Green. You know, you don't know what you're going to get from this guy. So you're trying to push the buttons to get to see what works, to see what motivates him. Not that he hasn't been mo- unmotivated. I don't want it to point it that way, but just to see what buttons to push to get the best out of him because he probably has the most talent of anybody on your team and are in the wide receiver group. Spartan Knoll 71, it's Ralph in Hawaii. Aloha, guys. How's it? I need to like record that and play that whenever he because that's what yeah, he writes. He, he yeah. writes it out. 14 days till I touch down in Tallahassee. The morning I land, I now have to jump in the car and take a ride to see Corey and Jeff in Pensacola. So mm. excited. Right. I guess he's going to do it. That's awesome. Man. All right, Ralph. Nice. Question. Has Warchant ever thought about putting together a preseason hype video? The event that you hype is not the first game, but instead the season opening Warchant meet and greet with your fans. You could splice mm. in various caller comments over some B-roll. Look at our guy. All these producers. Everybody's a producer now, Corey. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. They're coming for your job, coming for your neck. Producer Ralph. Uh, well, we need B-roll of the fans, not just the calling. I mean, maybe maybe we'll do a hype video for 2022 after we have vi- video of you all hanging out with us this year, uh, hopefully when we get that all hammered out. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll promote something for 2022, and I'll have footage of you, Ralph. You know, shotgunning a white claw. Uh, That'll be our coup de grace shot there. Uh, Ralph says, I'm currently working on a very special gift for Ed to show my appreciation for DeLuna's sponsorship of the show. If he is at the Pensacola event, you think maybe he will let me kiss the ring? Sure. Shoot. I would imagine he will. Absolutely. Yeah, no lie. Come on. As always, mahalo for taking my question. Go root war chant. Ura. I was so excited to say the Ura. I tripped over myself there. I would say that's on you, Aslan. You could put together a hype video. Yeah, I will for 2022. I just don't have I don't have a lot of B-roll. Oh, of okay, all right. Well, out. he was saying, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, yeah, you can go back in YouTube and all those all those live shows are archived, right? Yeah, but it's not good B-roll. It's you and I sitting in our houses like that. Right. It's talking. Right. It's good voice. But yeah, you know, we want you know Jeff Cameron putting somebody in the head like, ah, hey, yeah, what's going on? And you know, <laughs> what's Gene going high- on, partner? Yeah, yeah like I got Gene high fiving guys, and you know, yeah. Tom Lang okay. playing beer pong. Ira just you know explicative uh you know expletive you know ridden laced rants and stuff in the <laughs> right, parking like lot, he does you know, yes just, yeah you exactly right uh, gator 188 austin also doing something crazy with michael langs and all of us the whole family a uh, gator 188 wake up i'm sure he said, he said it probably wake up very excited about the upcoming season appears the team is more bought in due to the roster changes success this year to me would be six or more wins my belief is we will get six in the regular season. Not drinking the flavor aid with respect to eight plus wins. Your thoughts? <laughs> did he Knowles. really type that? He did. He's not drinking the flavor aid. That's good for said. you, buddy. Uh, good for you, Gator Kirk. Um, that was Gator Kirk, right? Correct. That's, yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's. I brought that up on headlines today. Gator Kirk the, a, dropping it. How did it go? How did the live show go? By the way, I didn't get to watch. Yeah, I liked it. It was fun. It was good. It was. It was a little. If you look at the positioning of the cam where the camera is, like. Jeff is to my hard right, so and I'm right in front of the camera. So of course my dome is just it's just glaring. But then every time I wanted to look at Jeff, you were just seeing the back of my fat neck. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. But other than that, everything it went well. We did we didn't cuss. It nice. was live. We we didn't cuss. So uh, but yeah, somebody brought up drinking the Kool Aid, and I said once again, guys, it's Flavor Aid. <laughs> and then my and then I was like, how did? And then my thought was, how did Kool Aid let that? <laughs> what do you thought right. the Kool-Aid people would have come whoa, out and be like, whoa, guys, whoa, that wasn't whoa. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We weren't Jonestown. That was another company. Kool-Aid had nothing to do with Jonestown. But uh, so, yeah, that's cool. That's funny that he said that. Crazy is I've never even heard of Flavor Aid until you corrected the history on that for us, Corey. 
Yeah, I think it went out of business because of Jonestown. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, it. that's like the white Bronco with the OJ chase. Um, uh, this this was a little more tragic than OJ's. Uh, you know, nine hundred people killed themselves or were killed. But anyway, back to Florida State football. Yeah, I'm, I will not begrudge any Florida State fan that thinks their team's going to win six games in the regular season. I sure, think that's and that's, that's not a, pie, that's not pie in the no, sky no, nonsense. It's a practical, reasonable expectation. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, the the number for Vegas is five and a half, yeah. so six is right there in the mix. Like that's there's nothing. 10 or 11 wins, nine wins. That's a little, you're biting up, biting off because it's a tough schedule, especially the second half of the season. Yes. But yes. Uh, I mean, you know, with the, the talent on this roster, that November is like playing in the SEC West. If you're, you know, like a middle, if you're like an Auburn or something, you know, but with yes. the talent on, listen, man, they got NC if State. If you're like an Ole Miss or Mississippi State. Yeah. That's what this will be like. You're, you, you close out October at Clemson, then you're home NC State. Home Miami at Boston College at Florida and at North Carolina is right in there too. October like 9th. I, that's yeah, October so 9th. Yeah, but that's like five of your last seven games. Right, right. Four. You got at North Carolina, at Clemson, at Florida, and Miami at home. And Those that Boston are your College four toughest that, games. That Boston College game is that I, I I almost if you give me Miami Boston College I would I would say I think I'd be more surprised if Florida State beat Boston College and if they beat Miami right now as you sit here and talk. Okay, all right, okay. Let's, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go there with you, but I see what you're saying. I can, I can understand that. But, yeah, I think six wins. I think, man, I, I, in, in just again, if you're competitive, if you can see this building block, the blocks being built, if you can see the steps, if you can see a few of these players take big leaps, not just in production, but just, well, yes, I guess technically that's all you really care about is in production, I, you know, leadership, uh, you know, grades. I don't know. I don't know how you judge football players. I was thinking more about production. So if you, t if you see these players take big steps, that's a, that's a good sign, like you were talking about, with five of those guys that you see, oh, man, that in the future, that guy might be an NFL player or might be an all-conference player. That's the kind of stuff you want to see. You can live with a six and six. Nobody at Florida State is no Florida State fan is going to be over the moon with a six and six season. That's just not how any of you were raised. It's not something that gets you excited, but you can't. It can make you a little more optimistic about the future. Absolutely, well said. Now, yeah, the eight plus wins. That's where you know, some folks might lose, but yeah, six wins. Absolutely, go ahead. You can look at that schedule and, and find six wins. They're there. Sure. They're yeah. There. Um, all right, man. Home stretch got to, actually no. There's several more. Um, if we oh, can get all to them, we'll we'll spread them out the rest of the week. I mean, we're gonna watch practice and we can talk about it for 20 minutes without being too repetitive, so we can maybe sprinkle in some of these. Nonetheless, let's go to Spear 0805. I think this is the first time. Yeah, it looks like it is. They joined January 1st, 2020. Five Ooh. total posts. By the way, Spear 0805. Uh, you do tell us where you're from. You gotta let us know the most famous person from there. Although it's Pensacola, I think we've had a couple of people do that. Nonetheless, it's uh, I w who would you say from Pensacola? Would you say it's Emmett Smith, Derek Brooks, or Roy Jones Jr.? Uh, I'd say Roy Jones Jr. I wouldn't say Emmett. I mean, Come a, on, he, he was a Derek world Brooks. champion for. A, I think Roy Jones Jr. is known more throughout the world. Yes. Than Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith's very, very famous in this country. I mean, he was a he won Dance with the Stars for crying out loud. I think I know he was on it. Uh, but yeah, th there's there's been some incredible athletes from Pensacola, but I would say Roy Jones because he's also maybe the best to ever do it pound for pound. He was just incredible, just could never find anybody that was a real rival. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I backtracked. Uh, fine. Their name is Brennan. Hey, it's Brennan from Pensacola. Make okay. sure that's like uh, Brennan. That was the name of that was that Will Ferrell and Step Brothers. One of them yeah, was Brennan, yes, wasn't it? it? was. Yep. Nonetheless, uh, two questions. I heard Aslan say Emmett Rice is progressing. Will he start week one? No. No. no I, wouldn't. I would be stunned if that happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if I said he was progressing. I know there was a shot of him in the Robert Scott weight room, weight training, strength training video that we had done. Uh, but it was just because it was a good shot. Like, you know, he was grimacing. He was, you know, straining, and he had a cool Florida State shirt on. So, Oh, and he's out there at practice, right? He's I mean, he's not doing anything with in the team stuff or really anything at all, but I yeah. think he's rehabbing a little bit out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he was so, wearing a knee yeah, brace I, and not, you know. I, I can't imagine that he'll be ready in three weeks. Or yeah. Is that right? It's only three weeks from now? Three and a half weeks? Yeah, man. So. Yeah. All right, we keep hearing about defensive backs. Who are the best ones? This is you. Oh, right to the point. Account. I like that. Yeah. To the 
brevity. Um, hmm. Hmm. Look, can, can you bring that back again in a in a week and a half, two weeks? I will tell you the best ones through three practices with no pads. Uh, Kevin Knowles. Uh, I would say Jamie Robinson. Uh, who else am I? Who else am I thinking? Who else am I missing? Jarvis Brownlee doing all right out there. Yeah, he's been he's been pretty. He's physical, man. He's he's been pretty good. What about Travis um, J. Come on, Travis J. This is Travis J.'s year. Yeah, he hasn't. Again, though, it's it's so hard to because look in one on ones, he's a safety, right? Yeah. So he's done fine in one on ones. He's not he's not giving up anything, but like he's not gonna he's not making incredible breaks on the ball like a like a one eighty pound corner is, and then in eleven on eleven. They don't ever throw the ball, hmm. so, so they never get a pass off. Oh. So it's hard to it's hard to judge. What about our guy from Arkansas? I thought Ira yeah. had some good things to say about him in terms yeah, of the. McCl I don't know how to McClellan McClellan yeah McCleon, McCleon um, Jarquez yes. But anyway, yes, he has looked good. Uh, it wasn't just he had a couple picks in the first day, but he's he's at safety and he really is kind of rangy. He moves around and and seems to be around the ball a little bit and. One more. Um, again, hard to judge in eleven on eleven, but Miko Dotson is moving well. So okay, that's good. a good that's a good sign too. Good, good. I like that. I like. But that I would say Knowles to me has been the best through three non padded practices. Okay. Let's go to XDQ 4 aka Derek. Wake up! The football gods are granting you one wish for the football season, but you have to choose. From the menu I provide. Four options, Corey. Here we go. Mm, all right. Option one, Lawrence Toafili, 150 yards of total offense every game. Two, oh. Andrew Parchment leads the ACC in all wide receiver statistical categories. Three, Jermaine Johnson leads the nation in sacks. Four, Ryan Fitzgerald, perfect on field goals this season. Derek says, I would pick Jermaine Johnson leading the nation in sacks because I believe that would mean our defense had a good year, which should equal at least a win or two more. What say you? Prayers and condolences to the Bowdens and Seminole Nation. Go Knowles. I'd say to a feely, man. 150 every game? I would say those are the two to choose from because of what they would mean for the success of the team, right? Yeah. Like, if you have a receiver, if you have a running back that's getting 150 a game. I don't know, man. I say to a or parchment. Like, God bless Jermaine Johnson, but you can get 17 sacks and... Um, well, I mean, if you get 17 sacks, that's a lot of that's second amazing. 19s. Yeah. But that's also a lot of second 19s. And typically, if your defense is just average, they're not going to be picking up a first down. You don't usually pick up a first down on a series where you get sacked. I don't know the percentages of that, but I would guess... <laughs> The person, the, if that you get be, sacked, that should be an analytic. That should be an it analytic. It really should. Step, if you man. get sacked, it probably, I bet it cuts down your chances of making a first down by like 50 or 60%. Yeah. Somebody look that up and send it to us. <laughs> um, you know, the normal ways to reach out to us. But I, I'd be genuinely interested in that. But I would have to imagine most sacks don't, don't, aren't followed by first downs. So to me, that's a plus your, that what that means for the guys on the other side, what that means for the DBs. Um, you know, I, I would think a guy leading the nation with like 16 or 17 sacks, um, that would that would bode as well for the defense as a running back, uh, you know, 150 yards per game. I know it was all purpose, so maybe like 40 receiving yards per game. I mean, yeah, that would be a great, great sign. A like, great sign. That's probably a better sign. I, yeah, Toa Feely is one, and then to me, Jermaine Johnson's two. Like if you have a 2,000-yard back, I mean, like San Diego State would have the Pumphrey guy. I mean, there's always like a, there was a guy from Buffalo that had like what, like nine touchdowns in a game. There's or no way absurd. somebody has ever. I, I can't imagine there's ever been in the history of football a running back that had over two thousand yards of total offense on a losing team. Right, right. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe there's been a sack leader that's been on a losing team. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll take all, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'll stick with Toe Feely. I just think 150 yards. That's Total offense. Yeah, we're again, not that's all purpose. So that could be forty yards receiving or seventy yards receiving, or you know, twenty five yards on a kick return. No, I'm saying but, from scrimmage, man. Not all purpose. We're not counting twenty five okay. yard kick right. returns. Still, that though. that's rushing and receiving. Yeah, but man. yeah, that's I don't know what that is. What is that? That's yeah, that's like right at eighteen hundred yards. Yeah, I'll take that. That's that's really good. 
Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That's 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 a harbinger of good things to come. I'd if be your like guys Sean, doing that. I'd be like Sean Combs. Take that. Take that. Um, S Quinn sixty seven. Wake up! You can almost, you can almost feel the cool fall football air. Maybe not in Tallahassee though. Accurate. It's it's brutal here. Uh, we're excited. That is uh, S Quinn. We are excited about heading down for the Notre Dame game and watching the Knowles. The War Chant team seems to be hitting full stride at the perfect time. My question for the week. I have heard you discuss the transfer players that are new to the roster and the younger players. Who are the players that have been on the team for a few years that have taken a big step up in practice? Have any third, fourth-year guys, etc., that haven't played much in the past been impressive? Love the show. Keep it up. Go Knowles. Class of '93. Oh, there oh, you go! A great what a time. year! Oof. What a great year that Good was! Stretch. Good stretch. Yeah, of years. man, we never see a loss at home. Yeah, you would have seen the wide right. Um, yeah. So remember, last year we didn't get to watch. Um, so it's hard to really judge. And when you, t- I mean, man, this team is so young. Like, how many guys on this team have even been here three or four years? Right. It ain't many, right? No. It's Keyshawn. It's Pokey. Cam McDonald, Eriser, um, Bavion. Yeah, but he's not practicing. Yeah, uh, yeah and you, you know, offensive lineman. It's really hard to tell right now because it's not in pads. That's a good question. Um, I, I don't want to say I'm going to punt on it, but I'm going to punt on it and tell you to ask it again in a couple of weeks after we've seen two weeks of them in pads. Um, right now, my answer is Keyshawn Helton. Um, he looks like a different dude. He looks a lot like the guy before he got hurt. Um, but better he's older he's more experienced Um, he's just he's fast man he's running away from people and he's really he's he's kept all the quickness obviously Uh, he's been really impressive I'm just I'm just trying to you know short sell I'm trying to inflate the stock of baby on Johnson I mean you know uh, you know coach Norvell pointed out that he thought baby on uh, as kind of put his best foot forward here yeah um and i mean again this it's a, it's a tough category you, you've given us you kind of put us into a corner which is totally fine i get it uh, but to Corey's point this is the like the youngest team and one of the youngest teams in well in and there football. are in so many transfers right like right. not there just aren't many guys that you can say okay what did he look like in 18 how much of a big step has he made since 18 they're not here anymore yeah. um you know they're, they're again i bet I, what i bet there's seven guys 10 guys maybe from the 18 team that are still here. So, you know, and most of the best players on this team are guys that did not start here. Um, so that's, it's hard to answer that question going back a few years. And then last year, again, we can't really compare because we didn't get to watch them practice in the preseason. How about Akeem? How's Akeem looking? Not bad. Not bad. I, you know, I uh, I don't know what position they're going to play him at. It's hard to tell. Um, but, yeah, he certainly has looked good in the one-on-ones. Nobody's, nobody's caught any really anything on him. Um, of note. Um, so, hey, by the way, I just saw on the bottom line, uh, Patrick Robinson out, announced his retirement today. Um, Hell of former a run, Florida man. State corner, um, one of the better players on that awful 2009 defense, played 11 seasons in the league. So, c- congrats to him on, on a, a really nice career. Mm, indeed, man. So, I also saw Coach Hamilton tweet out, uh, I think, like the Washington Wizards summer league team or whatever, and uh, XRM's out there. So he's back, okay. in, back in America trying to make it. So, By the way, there is a great picture. Did you see that picture? I meant to retweet it, and I haven't. Terrence Mann took it or had it taken. It's like, um, I need to go find it. You start talking for a second. All right. Uh, this will be our last question of the day. We do have uh, Will Null D56, Tennis Ump, and Get Down Black. We'll, we'll sprinkle you folks in as the week uh, rolls along. Hope you weren't waiting this whole time to hear your question being asked. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the last 50 minutes or so. Uh, we'll go to James in Pensacola. Wake up! I have participated in everything that Warchant has to offer, except asking a question on the Randigate Express. If I remember correctly, the tradition is to name a name of someone famous, athletically, that is, from your hometown. Well, I'm from Pensacola. Look at this, Corey. Almost like we had it planned out. Uh, and we have had a bevy of remarkable athletes from this town and surrounding areas. You know of the most famous ones, Emmett, Roy, Derek Brooks, but I would like to name a few you may not know about, starting with Michelle Snow. She played at Tennessee for the great Pat Summit and was the second woman to dunk a basketball in the WNBA All-Star Game. 
We okay. also claim some great baseball players in Travis Fryman, Jay Bell, and Jimmy Presley. Smoke Gainer in boxing and Justin Gatlin, who for a brief time was the fastest man on earth. I didn't know Gatlin was from Pensacola. Look at that. Also, former FSU kicker Graham Gano, though born in Scotland, grew up right down the road from where I live now in Cantonment. Is that how you pronounce that city? Cantonment? Cantonment? You, you, sure. Cantonment or, yeah, hey, man. Cantonment? Went, went in there. You, you pronounce it however you want, buddy. Okay. My question, quote, he uses a quote around separation. There's quotes around it. My question, if the separation between Milton and Travis that we are all expecting does not occur in fall camp, do you, both of you, feel free to answer, do you go with Milton due to his experience or Travis due to him having more tools in the box, namely running ability? Jordan did perform admirably against Notre Dame last season. I'd like to send my eternal blessings out to Ann and the entire Bowden family. My heart still heavy. Thank you, James B. Well, thank you, James. Appreciate right, James B. We appreciate that, buddy. Um, Travis still out there running with the quote. Oh, actually, oh, sorry. I'm, we're not supposed to talk about that. But when they start, sorry, Coach Norvell, I'll, I'll take it on the chin. Um, when they start to run out there in the in the first mirror in, in the first period of like media availability to watch and they go out and they they run like seven on seven versus air and they ran 11 on 11 uh i mean jordan runs out there at the first team will that get yeah, me in trouble Corey? They, should i not say that I'm no sorry. but they get they they get equal reps and yeah. it's the third day of practice it but, doesn't matter but, jordan, Corey, jordan did that the whole spring but you know jordan's got the better receivers in offensive line I and mean, it's first team you know, no, so. but I, but I'm, but I'm saying having you know watching the actual practices as they happen and the eleven on eleven and the seven on seven, it's all alternated. Um, they they really are getting the same number of reps uh, it, with the ones with the twos. It's it's. Uh, oh yeah, I, no, you're I, right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I'm just saying. I I think right now he has whatever. If there's a lead, I would think that Jordan has some sort of edge. And yeah, I don't man, know. Like I, Milton, Milton, has Milton not can't win good. on the cards. I don't. Can Milton win by decision? Like, I, I don't think this can this can't sustain itself if Mackenzie Milton wins a job. I wouldn't think like he can't win on the judges' scorecards. Like he's got to yeah. he's got to deliver knockout. I feel like. And man, I, I just you know I want, Travis made a really really great play the other day. I meant to mention this in the observations and I didn't. He he ran away from Jermaine Johnson. Jermaine Johnson was coming off the edge and quite fast, but he's not as fast as Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis felt him sprinted. I mean he was going full speed to his left. It made a really nice throw on the sideline for a com to a comebacker for for Pokey, who made the catch inbounds diving for like a 14 yard gain. It's a really good play, really impressive play, and it was a great throw rolling to his left, running full speed. I'm like, man, sometimes now, let's not sleep on this dude. Hmm. Uh, again, he's got he's got dynamic athleticism, and he is not throwing the ball nine yards. You know, he he can throw the ball. He's not an NFL quarter ready quarterback right now, but he can throw the ball and maybe he takes this. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like if it's even, I just think if it's even and they both in the scrimmages perform equally or close to equally, I just think the guy that can make something out of nothing, as long as he's not throwing four picks, as long as he's making good decisions to get rid of the ball when it's not there, you know, I, you know, I know Milton's a little bit more gifted of a thrower as far as seeing it quicker. Like, again, that's one thing that I still, w with Jordan, when it's there, he still seems to wait just a, a tick longer than when, when Milton sees it, it's out of his hand. Now, in 11-on-11, 11 11, ain't nobody seeing nothing. They don't, but in the 7-on-7s, seven on on seven on when they complete passes, Milton just seems to get rid of it just a hair quicker as far as trusting his eyes and making the throw. But Jordan, Jordan throws the ball fine. It's just a matter of seeing it, recognizing it quicker, and getting it out of his hand. You know what I mean? Like you know what I'm talking about when it comes to great quarterback play. Those guys see it immediately, and he clicks, and it's out of their hand quickly. I don't know that Jordan's still got that part down yet that it needs to be to be elite. But he's got some tools, man. He's and and again, if you're playing a a defensive line that's pretty darn good, remember what he did to Notre Dame last year. So, you know, I, 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 it's, it, to me, it really is 50 50. Milton's got a higher ceiling because he's proven it. He's got a Heisman top five finish type ceiling. But Jordan Travis right now in 2021 might give you the best option. 
that, you know, 2017 was a long time ago. Jimbo was still here for crying out loud. That was a long time ago. So, um, you know, I know that was a long way of answering, not answering it at all. No. Nothing. Hey, man. I get it, Corey. You wanna, you hey, so sure I want to do, equal, did, equal did you want to add something to that? No, I'm good, man. Do you want to ask something before we shut it down and pitch no, it? No, I was going to say Cameron? that picture, the picture that Terrence Mann tweeted. So, you know, they're doing the summer league in Vegas. Yes. And uh, yes. there's a bunch of Florida State dudes out there. So I, my eyesight isn't great. But as far as I can tell, this is one picture. Raekwon Gray, they're all in a, uh, it looks like the Venetian maybe. Look at you. Show It's off. a fancy one. It's got the, uh, it looks Whoa, like it's got a Sistine Chapel up top. Wouldn't that be the Venetian? Yeah, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, anyway, I you know, I don't know my Vegas casinos. I've only been out there once. Did you no, retweet it? Did, or do I no, I didn't mean somewhere? to. I admit, I just liked it. I didn't retweet it. But okay, I'll look it's it Raekwon Gray, Patrick Williams, Fiondu, Balsa, Balsa, Devin Vassell, P.J. Savoy, who's not in the league, Terrence Mann, Scotty Barnes, Trent Forrest, and John Isaac. That's all in like the last four years, five years. Yeah. All those guys are NBA players from the last five years, including three lottery picks in four first rounders total, or five first rounders total. Um, uh, no, four, five lottery. But Vassell was a lottery pick too. Yes, correct. So three top six picks. Another. I mean, it's just a remarkable what that. It's really cool to see them all uh, taking a picture like that. Um, all, all the all the guys from the last four or five years. All out in Vegas, all living the NBA dream. Wait, did you just say top six? The lottery is more than six, isn't it? Like no, a- I was saying, but Isaac, Isaac, Patrick Williams, and Scotty Barnes were all taken in the first six picks of the draft. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Vassell was a lottery pick too, but he was. I think the lottery is now fourteen picks. Yeah. So he was in the top fourteen. But yeah, yeah. So four lottery picks, five first rounders, and then uh, yeah, just Terrence Mann in there, Trent Forrest. Yeah, good stuff. Mm, it's fantastic. All right, everybody, uh, Jeff Cameron Show coming up 1 to 3 p.m., 93.3 FM, Terrestrial Radio in Tallahassee, but also streaming live on War Chant TV. That's our YouTube channel, so do check it out. They're practicing Wednesday morning. We'll be out there. We'll provide some updates. I mean, not just some updates. I mean, we'll share observations and everything on the show for you folks tomorrow, which will be uh, broadcasting from Jacksonville. So uh, stay connected. We're rolling. I mean, there's stuff going on Almost every single minute. We're almost like a 24 hour mm. unit right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Right now. It's crazy. It's amazing. All because of you folks. Like, I mean, literally, all because of the passion and the uh, the undying loyalty you have to Florida State Athletics. So we can't thank you enough. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thanks so much for listening to Wake Up War Chant, fueled by DeLunacuff. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.